Hello and welcome back to Let's Play Disco Elysium with me, Bring It On. So instead of going straight to the church, there's a couple of small things we have to do. And I want to take care of those first, because we only have about an hour to kill. Then we can do the church after we get our gun back, and then do Kuno's quest as well, and then pursue Ruby. But I'll do a couple of things. Those guys that were checking out Kim's car asked us to go talk to Cindy the Skull. Hello again, officers. Have you come to admire my mural? Uh, that guy and Screw the World send their best. I don't believe it. I've never known those boys to have manners. The bemusement in her voice doesn't fully mask genuine tenderness. They seem to hold you in high esteem. They'll never be skulls, but... but their hearts are in the right place. She softens. Your yeah, skulls are silly. What are you even trying to achieve? She throws you a conspiratorial glance, then presses her finger to her lips and squints up at the sky, as though straining to hear something in the distance. Have you noticed the quiet? Every so often, you might hear a gunshot pierce the air somewhere in Jamrock. But in Martinez, no gunshots. No sirens. The people are languishing in boredom and complacency. This place is a sepulchre. We'll paint it red. We bring the raucous. You bring the sirens. A pretty romanticized view of what they're doing, but uh, sure. Alright, so I can't talk to her about what I talked to Kuno about. That's to be expected. Alright, so we have one more thing. I want to go check out... Um, Ruby's radio in the lorry. So we have two... So the surrounding blaze of the electric lights makes the white on blue police livery of the motor carriage seem beautifully ominous. We have to uh, ass assign responsibility, so we'll take care of that next. Uh, why am I even thinking about this? Wasn't I supposed to... Do something important? Something murder-related? There's always something important. Doesn't mean you can't take a moment to admire this piece of machinery. This is a Caprice Kanema. The Caprice Motor Corps follow up to their highly successful workhorse, Caprice 40, and the answer to the Lums Racing Breed, Ferv Series. With its air-cooled, rear-mounted 12-cylinder compression ignition engine, driving the rear wheels through a four-speed manual gearbox, the Kanema is able to reach 100 kilometers per hour in 13.5 seconds, and go on to a top speed of 180 kilometers an hour. Well, I don't know a lot about kilometers, but it sounds pretty good. <laughs> this is in miles per hour. I'd have a slightly better grasp on it. Want to roll over in, in the first sharp corner. The high center of balance is offset by a large battery bank mounted at the bottom of the cabin, feeding all the auxiliary systems and making the Kanema effectively a mobile power. This tech talk is really rubbing me the right way here. Due to a quite steep price tag, it is very unusual to see one in police livery. The machine really puts the loco back in locomotion. Point to the vehicle. Very cool. Mm-hmm. You want to take a closer look? The lieutenant smiles ever so slightly. Hey, what's it packing there? Point to the engine. 130. I reckon that's a 7-liter V12 there. That's what? Rub your chin. A 7-liter V12? 7.2. Supercharged. Ooh. Lieutenant is trying to uh, suppress a smug smile, unsuccessfully. My car has got a 6.2 liter. It's not supercharged. I'm going to get a Pro Charger at some point. Just not yet. It's hard to avoid a, afford a Pro Charger and a student salary. Saying these words brings him immense joy. A fine machine. We're going to hand over the smooth metal surface. Yes. An extraordinary machine. 
with his gentleness in the lieutenant's voice as his eyes ran over the vehicle's contours. It's nice and all, but why so modest? Put some zing into it. Flare it up. Slam it down. Helium headlights would improve the range and quality of the visual field a lot. Ever thought about switching to helium headlights? Actually, I have a pair at home. Just haven't gotten around to fitting them yet. I need to lay some wiring for the ballast first. If we ever get this case solved, then we can do it together. Maybe. Yes, definitely, maybe. He replies with an apologetic smile and nods. Okay, let's move. Hey, look at that, we're bonding. This foul ate the smell of cigarettes and perfume. Well, it looks like the frequency dial is absent. Strain. The smell of the clothes. Okay, so we can't interact with that. I think there was a radio also back at the, uh, the harbor. It was in that r first room in order to get into the harbor. And these guys are still out and about. It's past nine. Go to bed, guys. Call it a day. Um... Wasn't it this? Maybe it's this. The payphone hangs mutely on the phone. Yeah, I thought this was a radio. Maybe not. Alright, well. Not gonna worry about it right now. Actually, let me look at that quest. Oh no, we gotta go talk to the ravers. Maybe that'll lead us here. Or it'll give us an option in the lorry. So let's go talk to the ravers about the radio. So we can talk to the archer. There's a fast travel option, isn't there? Haven't used it yet. Keep forgetting about it. Uh, I think it's up... No, it's down this way. Hello again. The girl looks up at you for a moment before turning back to her work. Have you seen a red-haired woman around? No. Just no? It's pretty desolate here. I only hear the dogs bark at night and see the shadows move down the coast. Well, that's good. The neighbors complain about noise when you get the club going. Exactly. It's our chance to turn the grim desolation into an overwhelmingly fun dance party. All right, let's talk to these guys. Come on, get in. The warm stuff's getting out. All right, squeeze in. Sorry, we barely have room for one. He points his thumb at the lieutenant. You go ahead. I'm too old for this. <laughs> okay. I'm actually not, he thinks. I just dislike delinquents. I'm sure you will feel right at home. I'll keep watch. He gestures for you to keep, or to squeeze in. Give me some all the fun, Kim. Hi again. So, uh, how are things going? As All right. always. Let's see if we can boost our logic real fast. What do we got? I don't think we're going to be able to pass the check regardless, but we'll give it a shot. Minus one from thoughts. We have seven. I think that's pretty solid. Hi again. So, uh, how are things going? 
Right, I've already read all that. Maybe everything isn't quite as you've been told. Take a moment to analyze. A number of things don't add up. Let's take a look. How about gather around, kids? Okay, kids. Now gather around. The young speed freak puts down a busted capacitor and looks at you. The one with the large head seems very enthusiastic about whatever you have planned. Their would-be leader is less amused. Sometime in the past, I'm not sure when and where, but betrayal was involved. I fell sick and became the shadow you see now. Before that, I have reason to believe I was a police detective. But you still are! I was good enough in this job to be awarded the rank of Lieutenant Euphrater. I could have been captain. Imagine that. What happened? I kept looked serious suddenly. Disco happened. I've been trying to say if we need the next step in dance music to happen fast. Shut it. He looks at his friend. What? I have. I've said that. Now, obviously, that might as well have been a thousand years ago. But there's still some detective left in me. The young speed freak is silent. He senses something is wrong. This isn't the makings of a club. It's a tent full of laboratory equipment for manufacturing drugs. I have no idea how you arrived at that conclusion, but it's wrong. Look, we even have speakers. He points at the speaker. One speaker. They have one speaker. Where's his friend? Did he lose his friend? What do you mean, friend? The other speaker. You have only one. It's a one speaker system. It's monodynamic. You wouldn't know the first thing about sound reproduction in anodic music. Other speaker. This may be the brain damage talking, but you've definitely never heard of monodynamic or one speaker systems. You have no headphones. What in a cell need her headphones to spin tape? What do you know about spinning tape? Nothing. I know you pawned them. Likely for lab equipment and drug ingredients. I'm sorry, but there is no lab equipment and no drug ingredients. The Nosafet is here for its active ingredient. He said it was for his nose. What more do you want? Likely pseudoephedrine. Almost exactly the shape of ephedrine. Ephedrine makes you happy, and so does pseudoephedrine. The distilled water, cornerstone of a clean lab. And of all cellular based life. What's your point, Lawbringer? The ether in the air, a useful solvent. Good for getting acting agent out of a solution. Make up your mind. First is the sweat, then it's the ether. He smiles nervously. There's no need for me to pile on anymore, is there? No shit. He sounds tired. In short, you try to use a police detective to set up a drug lab. That's... come on, that's... He waves his hand. Preposterous? I meant to say, not true. So what are we going to do with you? What do you mean, do? There's resignation in his voice. He's almost ready to drop the act. It wouldn't take a lot of pushing. You tell me what's really going on, and we'll work from there. I can be lenient. What do you mean by lenient? We'll see. Now speak. He thinks for a moment, then opens his mouth but closes it again, then finally raises his hands. Things are just way too hard for an entrepreneur in this city. It's not like we're not gonna turn the church into the wickedest club in East Revershall. Because we are, we totally are. We just gotta turn it into a speed lab first. You know, to get our foot in the door. And why did you need me? Like I told you, spooky assholes moved in while I was getting all this stuff together. A month ago, the place was empty, and now it's all spooked up. They're not really spooky, are they? No, man. They're spooky, all right. It's just that they would also probably call the police if we started cooking speed in there. But the sign was way off, too. I couldn't feel the love at all. Sir, you promised you'd be lenient. Yeah, let's decide later. I I might go with four here. 
They still set up the dance club and get rid of the, uh, the drugs. I have to look into the spooker situation before I can decide what to do with you. We can continue on an amiable path, right? No more misunderstandings, no more lies. Before you go, is there anything else you need? He nods, smiling cautiously. Well, that's it for now. As always, we'll... Oh, wait, no, no, no. We gotta talk. Again. Whoops. So, uh, how are things going? As always... Oh, that is weird. The large-headed youth has closed his eyes, lost in the music. Sensing you, he opens them. Good morning! Okay. Huh? I see you're here again. Off sign, man. Did I mention getting us into the church without? He rummages through his tools. This young speed freak seems to know a lot about signs. Could he be the techno tinkerer you're looking for? His look is intensely suspicious. Could you use your sign sense to help me contact a coalition warship? Don't think so. Big bad frequencies are extremely negative. Fault suppression, dream implantation, memory revision, pretty out there stuff. Not sure I want to get involved with it. There is fear there, but also curiosity. He just needs a reason to help you. Besides, our own signs aren't even synced yet. So how am I supposed to get you synced up with a big bed? It don't make any sense, law lover. Okay, well, that's fair. Alright, I guess we're going to go into the church then, because nothing that I had planned on doing really panned out. We have about half an hour to kill before we can go get our gun. Oh, there's that dead body. Let's do that before the church. Shouldn't need a gun for that. Shouldn't need a gun for the church either. As far as I can tell, but you never know. Oh yeah, let's take off some of the stuff that I'm wearing. Uh, we'll put this back on. that back on and I uh, want a different hat yeah we'll do that <laughs> also those pants look ridiculous on me <laughs> all right Kim Here's a dead body. A man lies on the boardwalk. His limbs bent and neck turned at an unnatural angle. Right next to him is an empty bottle of spirits. In his cramped hand, a chewing gum wrapper. Half of his body has slipped between the cracked boardwalk, starting with the left leg. The fall has left him broken, contorted like a sad puppet. The smell is not as bad as a two-week-old corpse, but it's definitely heading there. Hold on. Lieutenant squats next to the corpse and examines his face. Two bulging eyes stare back at him, void of any signs of life. Lividity is faintly pronounced. Whoever this is has been dead for two days. No longer. We need to investigate. He stands up and shivers as a gust of wind blows through his bomber jacket. Calm now. Carefully. Just another day. Just another dead body. Breathe. Study the man's clothes. He's wearing mud caked boots, beige trousers, and an old brown leather jacket with a bright blue lining. There are traces of kebab sauce on his chest. The leather jacket suits him well. It must be custom made. Interesting that his body's still as intact as it is on the uh, boardwalk, especially with all the seagulls around. As soon as they you know, find a corpse, it's going to get picked apart. Uh, search his pockets. You find some sunflower seeds and a rain-soaked library card folded into two. His jacket feels sodden and heavy under your hand. Good. We should take a look at that library card after this is done. Study the man himself. The man has fallen through a crack in the boardwalk and hit his head against the metal bench. Coagulated blood covers his black hair. One of his feet is still dangling through the hole. You have to be quite inebriated to fall that bad. Well over a litre of pure ethanol. Three bottles of wine 
or one and a half of spirits. Or maybe it was just dark. Examine his face. His expression is dull, like the sea behind him. Drops of water shining on his moustache. His eyes, empty and wide, look frightening in their frozen gaze. Height, 170 to 175 centimeters. Curly hair, stout build, age approximately 50 to 60 years. He was confused when he died. Confused and alone, most likely. Overcome with the awful surprise of it all. He was just about to head home. The first step back home proved to be his last. That's what the chewing gum seems to point to as well. Study the surroundings. There's some dried blood on the metal bench, right where the corpse's head rests. The floorboards are rotten and slippery wet around the hole. An empty bottle lies nearby. A chewing gum wrapper is clutched in his fist. Examine the man's head. A dried chunk of blood covers the hair at the back of his head. An open wound. It's sticky and cold to your touch. This is where he came out of himself, drop by drop, when he was unconscious. It took three, maybe four minutes. I don't see any other major wounds, do you? Uh, it's hard to say. Seems like the head wound was fatal. It's exactly the shape of the bench. Step on the floorboards. They screech under your feet ominously. It's hard to say whether the dead man's weight was the cause of the boardwalk to break. It definitely looks fragile. You see waves churning below. Something cracks beneath your feet. He could have easily disappeared into the sea through that hole, and you would have never found him. Examine the bottle. A 0.75 liter Tallulah vodka with its cap missing. There's hardly anything left inside. It's mid-market spirits with a slight touch of menthol. The man meant to enjoy himself, have a good time. Tear all around us. He looks at two other bottles near the coin-operated viewer and at your yellow plastic bag. I'd prefer if you didn't collect them this time. It's not proper. True. It feels disrespectful. Examine the chewing gum wrapper. Rubowski spearmint chewing gum. Green leaves on the cover. The man's mouth is half agape from the terror of the fall. Now look in. The blackness of death. Stench. You think you see white chewing gum too? He ate the whole pack, right? It's to cover the smell of alcohol before going home. The worst thing is, I've seen it before. Almost the same scenario, even the chewing gum. It's always the same. The lieutenant shudders from the cold. Step back. The entire boardwalk creaks in the wind as you take a step back. Who is this man? Looks like one of the locals. He'd have to know this spot to come here. You don't just walk over here. He looks south, the way you came. But that's just a lazy assumption. What do you think? At least this man knew how to party. Imagine the same scene without the bottle. Now that would be just sad. This is an omen, a sign from above. Don't start drinking again. Yeah, I think labeling him as an alcoholic is a bit premature. We don't know anything yet. We do know that he was married. Lieutenant, yeah, the lieutenant points at the ring on the man's left hand. The flesh around it swollen and gray. But you're right. Let's not run ahead. For now, all we know is that he's an unidentified middle-aged man found dead on the Martinez boardwalk. What do you think happened here? Death by misadventure. He slipped and fell through the boardwalk. A truly unfortunate accident. If it wouldn't have been for that bench, he'd be alive. Could it be related to the lynching? Ruby? No, I don't see anything that points in that direction. For now, let's treat this case as a simple, albeit sad, accident, and related to the murder case. Yes, but what if there's a killer on the loose? Two suspicious deaths in such a short time frame. You're right. Connecting it with the lynching is a stretch. Without any further evidence, yes. Do you think he was drunk? Point at the bottle. Oh, yes. Lieutenant nods. What about alcohol poisoning and liver failure? Some symptoms of acute alcohol poisoning could have definitely played a role here. Severe confusion, respiratory depression, unpredictable behavior. But I think that death arrived through head trauma, not liver failure. 
What about the kebab? What about it? The deceased ate some kebab. It's probably from a nearby place, maybe in the box. He shrugs. Sometimes a kebab is just a kebab. Someone should be held responsible for this broken boardwalk. It's dangerous. They'll seal this place off after the news reaches the coalition officials. I doubt that they have enough resources to actually repair the boardwalk. Not that sealing it off would keep anyone away. All it does is keep the city council's hands clean. He smiles sourly. Right. It does seem to be a pretty straightforward misadventure. Although there's still a question of identifying the body. What should we do with him? From where I stand, I can see two options. We either take the case and follow the leads to identify the body on our own. Or we report back to the station and leave this for our colleagues to handle. Hold on. What about field autopsy? A field autopsy isn't necessary if the cause of death doesn't appear to be criminal. And this looks like a simple accident to me. I'd say we should just write down head trauma and leave it at that. Let's keep this detour as short as possible. The sooner we get back to finding Ruby, the better. Yes, but isn't that kind of sloppy? Maybe, but we don't really have much time or resources to spare. The guys at processing will take care of the rest. We found him. We should finish this. Take the case. All right. We should first examine the library card you found. Then we can call the station from my kinema. Let them know we are taking the case. Folded library card. A library card found from a pocket of a dead man of the dead man on the Martinez boardwalk. It's still slightly damp to the touch. The cover bears a stamp of Jamrock Public Library. The library card is folded into two and still slightly wet to the touch. The front side reads Central Jamrock Public Library Card, issued to Billy Mejean. Expires July 53. Billy is a unisex name. Could be the deceased or his family member. Look inside. Whoever owns this card is an avid reader. You find a list of books written in blue pencil. Radio thriller. Stand a little less between me and the sun. The last one in the list is The Glinton Curve by M. Theobald. A library stamp indicates that the book has been returned. Most of these titles seem to be in the sci-fi genre. Some thrillers too. Look at the backside. If lost, please return the card to the library. Dial 005-02-55211 or visit us at Moreau Street, 78, Jamrock. Business hours, 900 to 1800. Good. We should give them a call from my kinema. See if we can learn anything about Billy Mejean. He takes a note. Alright, put it away. A man lie. There's some tear, an empty cigarette package, and a crumpled kebab wrapper in the trash bin. Examine the tear. Two empty bottles of Tallulah vodka and a can of black potent porter is all you find. No, there's more in there. Livis strawberry liquor, plus some Pilsner bottles too. Better not pick them up. They seem unhygienic. A tragedy. Lieutenant looks in the can, eyes watering from the smell. He shakes his head with genuine sadness. Examine the cigarette package. Whoever tossed it here was a heavy smoker. The brand name reads Red Astra. Red Astra is the black market version of Astra cigarettes, known for their high tar content. I examine the kebab wrapper. You see traces of mayonnaise and ketchup on it, as well as a tomato wedge. The wrapper reads, Shish Kebab Revachol. It's no older than a day or two. No mold yet. It's hard to concentrate in the smell. The sea air brings some relief. There's some tear. An em oh, I clicked on the body, I thought. A man. Okay. Well, oh, I don't want to run down the boardwalk yet because uh, I'm supposed to be getting my gun back. Well, hold on. Maybe I should leave and come back. Um. It's not like fast travel. Oh, hey, we can do that barbell again, too. 
We'll probably go through all these checks first thing in the morning after we're done with tonight. But we have a lot to do tonight as well. Alright, well I don't want to accidentally instigate a conversation with the person that has my gun. I mean, I guess we can slowly scope it. I would like to fast travel out of here to avoid it, but it's not going to let me do that. I don't see anybody standing around. Taking it really slow, so I can try and click away if I see him. I think we have to leave and come back. All right, doesn't look like they're here. Let's uh, let's try and reset this area real fast. A surefire way to do that is they go enter the uh, the raver's tent real quick and then get ready to go back over there. I'll double check the quest to make sure it was at 10. I know I've checked it a few times. I'm positive it's at 10, but. We'll just be doubly sure. Okay, I'm gonna call it here. In the next episode, we'll go to the boardwalk again, see if we can't confront the person that has our gun. The old fish market at 2200. Which I'm pretty sure is the boardwalk, right? Like that large area before the boardwalk itself. I thought that's what we read earlier. For honor. Hmm. I picked fascist dialogue options. Whoopsies. Huh. Alright, I'm going to call it here. Next episode, we'll see if we can't get our gun back. If they're not at the boardwalk, I guess we'll look around. And if we can't find them, we'll just do the church. Uh, but for now, I'm going to call it. Thanks for watching. See you guys in the next one.